Welcome to Worship at Bethesda. Today, Summer Soul Spirit, the Spirit of Canoe. Grab your paddle and come along. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to all of you who are gathering here at Bethesda for this Sunday morning in our August summer worship, as well as those who are joining us on our YouTube channel, Worship Experience. A special welcome this morning goes to our guest musician, Janelle Lim. Uh, it's been a joy to work with Janelle, uh, as you might guess, or maybe you already know. Uh, Janelle is Rebecca's sister, and so we're blessed to have Janelle leading us uh, and assisting us in worship this morning. And now as we continue uh, to gather in the name of our Lord who calls us, let us hear the call to worship. In the morning, O oh God, you would hear our voice, and so you call us. You call us at sunrise, you call us at this hour to come and know your presence like living waters. As you call us, may we respond with open hearts, open minds, and open wills. Continuing in worship, let us pray. Holy God, you call us together to reflect on your word and our life in your world. Be with us now as we pray, reflect, and 
sing it together, that we may hear your voice and understand your ways and walk in your paths. This we pray through Jesus the Christ, the living waters. Amen. So on this Sunday of Summertime Spirit Reflections and Worship, we turn to being Bethesda this morning with a few, uh, a few items to underline, beginning with our acknowledgement of Indigenous lands. Bethesda United Church, the link affirms that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe. It is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We are thankful for the enduring presence of Indigenous people on this land. And so this week, further preparations have been underway by Oak Hill Academy uh, to safely uh, facilitate our shared uh, spaces, learning and worship. And uh, you may notice in the bulletin that a scripture is given, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And in a school context, uh, this has as its reference point the awesome reverence of Lord, one of the definitions of fear in the Miriam on the Webster's Dictionary. And so it is that together with Oak Hill, we declare that the mystery, the awe, the reverence of God is the way into all wisdom, all things good and beautiful and true. In the love element corner, this core element is repeated. In Psalm 18, it is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Now, coming up next Sunday is the conclusion of our summer spirit worship series. And so, summer gardening or gardener images or stories of your joys in summer gardens and perhaps frustrations as well are requested by myself and please send them uh, by Friday uh, so that they may be part and parcel, uh, root and leaf and flower of our worship next Sunday. Some more invitations coming up and that is as we look towards our fall worship, uh, we're looking to continue during this year with big questions and various answers and so the invitation is going out what are your as yet unanswered or wanting further consideration? Big questions of faith and life. Please send them along. And as the scripture says, come, let us reason together. To other invitations, an all ages choir is being formed. There is a blank white sheet of paper at the back waiting for some names. This will be an all ages special Sunday. Uh, choir, and in a similar way, our Sunday school restart awaits some uh, teachers, some caregivers who will be on a rotation. And so, with those invites, and with our lovely prelude and our opening prayers and calls to worship, our opening hymn is Morning Has Broken. Please stand and sing if you're comfortable doing so.
Let us pray. God, you have called us together to worship as creator. You continue to call us now to listen, to hear your word as redeemer. As the one who enters into our life, now may we hear your word of life. May it be for us like waters in a dry place. Refreshen us with your word now. Amen. So uh, this morning, as we continue through our Summer uh, Spirit Worship series, uh, you'll see there an illustration uh, and the question, why canoe? Well, part of the answer is in the very illustration. It's because he leads us beside still waters and refreshes our souls. A bit of a review for all of us and for those who perhaps have uh, come, come on to our worship online for the first time. In this summer, we have been looking at some elements, some dynamics, some feelings, some experiences of summer and posing them as questions. We began with why cottage and looked at cottage or camping and or retreats as a place, yes, to relax, but also to pay to make memories and be refreshed. So here at Bethesda, our cottage is set as we continue to launch into our Summer Spirit series. Then last week, we considered why concerts, the summer concert experience, very familiar to many, but perhaps unbeknownst to many, there is or there can be in some summer concerts a real jumping off point into faith and the spirituality of music. And so uh, we situated ourselves in all of this with Psalm 127 and its telling question of how can I restore my soul? And the psalm answers in no uncertain terms that it is God as loving creator, as mystery, as awesome wonder, who calls forth the building of our souls. This is echoed in our Bethesda Manifesto. In the very first phrase, why is the Bethesda the link here? We are here to celebrate God and to grow in God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And so that starting point, that central point, that ongoing guiding point is God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer, shaping our lives, informing our experiences. And so we come this morning uh, after a time at the cottage and going to a concert to thinking about why a canoe. And so as I venture out in keeping with the theme, I'm going to take with me on my canoe ride the very handy uh, spill bucket because I'm not a great canoeist and something unfortunate might happen. I may need to bail some water out of the canoe. But I hope not. So, why canoes? I'm sure many of us are familiar with canoes and canoeing and uh, the adventures and spirituality that it may give. That it may give. I've had uh, some canoeing experience in Algonquin Park, Algonquin Park, a kind of iconic Canadian adventure. I've also done some canoeing in Muskoka and the not very pleasant in terms of water, but pleasant canoeing experience down in Coote's so-called paradise. So, what about canoeing as a spiritual experience? Well, again, after uh, putting my paddle into the stream with this worship series, unbeknownst to me, uh, just prior to today, here in Broadview, uh, there is a reference to the Peterborough or the Canadian Canoe Museum. And uh, here, is what, here is what it says. 
Every canoe tells a story. These seemingly simple watercraft carry complex stories that must be shared. They have a role to play in our understanding of our past and our collective future. And so to enter into the spirit of canoeing this morning, a bit of a segment of a film called The Canada Canoe. To put a paddle in the water is to feel the quiet power and possibility of Canada's past, its present, and its future. To paddle is to plug into the energies of the place, the land, the air, the water, the ancestors, the children who are yet to be born. The paddle connects us to all of that. To travel by canoe is to ponder where we came from, where we are, where we're going who we were, who we are, and who we can be. To pull is to connect to the waters, the rocks, the forests, the skies, all the creatures of the earth, then the people. To be there, to be connected as a mix of Canadians new and old. If it is love that binds people to places in this nation of rivers and in this river of nations, then one enduring expression of that simple truth is surely the canoe. when the petals dip in and out of the water, it resembles to me like a bird in flight moving forward. The action of the wings moving up and down propel it forward in such a beautiful, majestic way. In our culture, song is a way of storytelling, and song is a way of expressing emotion and family and life. Where would we be without that connectivity and those relationships? My dad's family was... In today's reflections, in the canoe and water to Ezekiel and chapter 37 of the water of life he brought me back to the entrance of the temple where a stream flowed eastward from under the temple threshold for the temple faced east the water flowed from under the right side of the temple south of the altar he took me out by the north gate and let me, led me right round as far as the outer east gate, where the water flowed out of the right-hand side. He measured off another thousand and made me wade across the stream again. He measured off another thousand. It was now a river. I could not cross. The stream had swollen and was now a deep river. He then said, do you see, son of man? He then took me and brought me back to the bank of the river. 
Now when I reached it, I saw an enormous number of trees on each bank of the river. He said, this water flows east down to the Arabah and to the sea, and flowing it and flowing into the sea, it makes its waters wholesome. Wherever the river flows, all living creatures teeming in it will live. Fish will be very plentiful, for wherever the water goes, it brings life. Water bringing life. In this case, very specific water. In the prophet Ezekiel, it is water flowing from the temple. And so not much of an interpretive leap to say, this is Ezekiel saying for us that the temple representing and manifesting God from it shall flow that essential water and life shall flourish and blossom. Now at this point, it's important to underline while there is symbolism, this is not just symbolic. This is the scripture and Ezekiel and the prophet saying that God's creative love as seen in water is as real and as tangible and as life-giving as water itself. We experience that in baptism, another sign and symbol and concrete reality. Probably most of us, whether here or elsewhere, have a special watering hole or watery place to which we make personal and emotional and spiritual connections. Once, one such place for me is Port Dover, seen in the background here. And I suspect that for Anna and family, their watering places where they now reside are very much places of healing and refreshment. That's what the spirit of water is all about. It's no surprise that poet, philosopher, and theologian John O'Donohue has some helpful and wonderful quotes about water and spirit and the bringing the two together. He says this, pictured on a canoeing scene, I would love to live like a river flows, carried by the surprise of its own unfolding. And I would suggest we add to that that the church see itself, that we would like to see ourselves as being like a river flowing and being delightfully surprised like a river flowing, some new and wonderful unfolding. And so the spirituality of canoeing rooted in the gift and the element of water. And next up, the spirit of balance. We turn to our next scripture reading, Isaiah chapter 43 and verses 1 and 2. And now, this, thus says the Lord, He who created you, Jacob, He who formed you, Israel, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Should you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Or through the rivers, they will not swallow you up. And so, Isaiah gives to us a promise of balance. Balance. Sorely needed in the proper and good functioning of a canoe. Canoe Balance. Take a look and listen. Well, canoe is kind of like a rocking chair. You can move it pretty easily right in this range. As you start to lean the boat over, you can see you get resistance back from the boat. As long as your head, your torso are, are, are immobile, your hips can kind of swivel. That makes the boat stable. Here's an example <laughs> of how important it is to keep your head over your hips. 
If I take this rock that weighs about the same as my head and I hold it out here, whoa. Now if I do the same thing with my head, whoa. Yeah, people tip over their boats because they get their core mass outside of the gunnels of the boat. As long as I keep my, my, my torso inside the gunnels, the boat can go way over, right? But pretty sweet if you're trying to balance a canoe. And of course, that points to what we've been saying during the course of this reflection, that balance rootedness requires our own heads to be carefully rooted in that source of water, that source of life, God who promises to shape our lives and who gives us what we need to be whole in body, mind, and spirit. Another scripture passage that uh, brings to mind the cause and the concern of balance. Luke chapter 8 and beginning at verse 22. Probably a familiar story, but perhaps with a new emphasis. It happened that one day he got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. When a squall of wind came down on the lake, the boat started shipping water, and they found themselves in danger. So they went to rouse him, saying, Master, Master, we are lost. Then he woke up and rebuked the wind and the rough water, and they subsided, and it was calm again. He said to them, where is your, your faith? They were awestruck and astounded and said to one another, who can this be that gives orders even to winds and waves that obey him? Now, most examinations and sermons and reflections on this passage focuses on the disciples' questions, who can this be? And the answer is given, it is God incarnate, who is able to uh, influence and, uh, and determine and create the overflowing gifts of creation, and in this case, the calming of the water. But what is often missed, I realize in coming to today, was that it first says, Jesus got into the boat and fell asleep. Believe me, it's no easy task to find an image of Jesus sleeping in the boat. Lots of images of calming the sea, lots of images of confronting the disciples and asking them, where is your faith? But Jesus asleep on the boat. An indication, a manifestation of balance, of peace, of wholeness, perhaps, and I would think definitely yes, connected to water and to movement and to that balanced rootedness in the spirit of water, the spirit of canoeing, the spirit of knowing God's peace-giving presence. Now, I'm thinking that many of you sharing in this experience today may feel your own sense of balance and rootedness while being on the water, while canoeing or kayaking. Such is the case with Janet, a newfound discovery of kayaking which refocuses her and uh, mine and probably everyone's love and peace-giving presence of the water, but the kayaking and that need for balance, not just in the uh, doing the kayaking, but how the kayaking gives balance itself.
in connection with the water, in connection with doing our part. The spirit of balance. So why can you? It points us to that gift of water, that gift of God's creative, nourishing water, which Ezekiel promises to us shall flow from God's own presence. And in canoeing or any water sport, there is balance. Jesus being balanced by falling asleep in the boat, are being balanced in connecting, whether canoeing, kayaking, or simply living our lives. Then, closely related to balance, whether in life or in the canoe, is direction. And for direction, he turned to Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. From there, Paul went to Derbe and then on to Lystra, where there was a disciple called Timothy, whose mother was Jewish and had become a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him, and Paul, who wanted to have him as a traveling companion, had him circumcised. This was on account of the Jews in the locality where everyone knew his father was a Greek. As they visited one town after another, they passed on the decision reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem with instructions to observe them. So the churches grew strong in their faith as well as growing daily in numbers. They traveled through Phrygia and the Galatian country because they had been told by the Holy Spirit not to preach the word in Asia. When they reached the frontier of Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but as the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them, they went through Mysia and came down to Troas. One night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian appeared and kept urging him in these words, Come across to Macedonia and help us. Once he had seen this vision, he lost no time in arranging a passage to Macedonia, convinced that God had called us to bring them the good news. Sailing from Troas, we made a straight run for Samothrace, the next day for Neapolis, and from there we sailed for Philippi, a Roman colony and the principal city of that district of Macedonia. After a few days in this city, we went outside the gates beside a river, as it was the Sabbath, and this was a customary place for prayer. We sat down and preached to the women who had come to the meeting. One of these women was called Lydia, a woman from the town of Thyresia who was in the purple dye trade, and who revered God. She listened to us, and the Lord opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she kept urging us, If you judge me a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay with us, and she would take no refusal. So before swimming back to Acts and uh, Paul's journey, a little bit about Straight direction when canoeing. Now your rudder stroke is a good way of keeping your boat going in a straight line. The rudder stroke is basically just holding your paddle in behind your boat. All we're going to do is start off with a forward stroke. And then when it comes behind our body, we can just hold onto the gunnel, which is the side of the boat. Far away, and I hope each day that you come home. I call out her name, but Angelina Jane is long, 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 long gone. So, with that stroke, the canoe in question 
is going in a straightforward direction. Balance and direction. Being rooted in God for balance. Keeping our oars in the spirit and in the water and connected to go in a, in a straight direction. Well, Paul's experience in Acts that we have just heard was very much, as it is presented to us, a, an experience in part determined by the direction of the Spirit. Paul wanted to go one place, but the Spirit suggested another. Eventually, he had a vision and felt called to Macedonia. And so it was that he sailed with the disciples to Philippi and there, realizing that direction, that movement over the water, preached the gospel, did you catch it? By a river. Again, spirit and water. And there, one of those who heard Paul speak was Lydia, and she in turn asked, to be baptized again that spirit of water like that stream flowing from Ezekiel like that stream of water that we experience in our lives and in baptism and yes while canoeing or kayaking or swimming our final scripture verse for today comes to us from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 17. A passage given as a subtitle, The Water from the Rock. The whole community of Israelites left the desert, traveling by stages as the Lord ordered. They pitched camp at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. The people took issue with Moses for this and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why take issue with me? Why do you put Yahweh to the test? But tormented by thirst, the people complained to Moses, Why did you bring us out of Egypt, they said, only to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst. Moses appealed to the Lord for help. How am I to deal with this people? He said, any moment now they will stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. In your hand, take the staff with which you struck the river and go. I shall be waiting for you there on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out for the people to drink. This was what Moses did with the elders of Israel looking on. Water from the rock. And just this week, I was reminded of that passage when going by the Anglican Cathedral on Jane Street, and there was their stone sculpture with water flowing from it. Water from the rock. The Lord giving even us grumbling people sometimes, like the people of Israel at Meribah, water to, to uh, take care of our thirst and life for balance and direction. And so again, our starting scripture passage, he leads me beside still waters and restores my soul. And so I would suggest and encourage this morning that this connection between the restoration of our souls is intimately and necessarily tied in with those gifts of waters. And wherever we find our place, wherever we may experience waters, whether it's canoeing or kayaking or being on a boat or swimming, we have the opportunity 
to receive that as a centering, as a balancing gift, as a directing gift of those gifts of the waters of life. Our hymn of response this morning has these lyrics. Crashing waters of creation, ordered by the Spirit's breath, first to witness day's beginning from the brightness of night's death. Parting waters stood and trembled as the captives passed on through, washing off the chains of bondage, bondage channel to a life made new, cleansing water once at Jordan, closed around the one foretold, open to reveal the glory ever new and ever old. And the final verse, capturing and moving with the waters of scriptures and canoes that we have heard this morning, living water, never ending, quenching the thirst and flood the soul, wellspring, source of life eternal, Drench our dryness, make us whole. As we are able, let us stand and sing crashing waters of creation. Continue in our pastoral prayer. Lord God, as we have gathered and listened and perhaps reflected back in our memories, may your Spirit allow us to wrap all of those memories and those experiences of canoeing or kayaking or swimming into that element of water. <clears throat> your gift to us of nourishing us, bodies and souls. We thank you for Jesus who comes to us as the living water. We thank you that you come to us through your spirit, flowing through our lives, calling the church to change directions and yet to go forward. We would bring it before you now our own memories of times and places where spiritual and physical thirst have been attended to by your spirit and by your servants. And those places of summer, happy, watery memory and ask that your spirit would turn them into occasions for deep joy and thanksgiving. God, as you promised through Ezekiel that waters would flow from the temple and there would be life 
so may we see your life-giving water to all people on earth. May we be concerned for water justice and equal distribution. May we take care of our own stewardship of water that we have in abundance. And may we also be sure to attune to your spirit in those places of spiritual thirst experienced by ourselves and others, so that we might know the balance and the direction and the gift of the water of life. In the name of Jesus, who calls us to pray together in the prayer that he gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Offertory. echoing of the lyrics for this offertory, we declare, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness in watering our souls and bringing water to our lives. And we thank you in turn, the faithfulness of those who are able to respond in the giving of gifts, to building up life-giving connections and streams of connection and mission and caring in and through Bethesda United Church. Amen. Now our sending hymn this morning has a water theme and connection. It's probably familiar to many of you as a classic of a Christian hymn with a water connection that calls us again to know that balance God of life, and that direction, as we sing together, will your anchor hold.
Christus. Our sending prayer. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who takes in deep water stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loved with wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the life-giving face of Christ in you, and so be blessed and encouraged. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the flowing Holy Spirit be with you and flow through you, now and always. Amen. And there is again today a time of refreshment downstairs, remembering that he leads us beside the still waters and restores our souls. Mm -hmm.